All right, we're going to do some more factoring. So let's uh, let's take a look at this kind. Uh, let's. I'm not going to show you how to factor right off the bat. I'm going to kind of do what we did with the other stuff first. So for instance, if I had, let me see, what if I had this? I'll start off really easy. What if I had x plus 5 times x minus 5? Now that's already factored, isn't it? Because those are the two factors. Those things are being multiplied together. But remember, factoring is kind of like backwards, right? It's kind of like multiplication, but backwards kind of. So um, let's actually multiply this together and see what we get. So I got x times x, which is x squared. And then I, the outside is negative 5x. And the inside is what? Plus 5x. What just happened? It's 0, isn't it? All right? I'll write it out. This is the only time I'll write out that whole thing. All right, so I get plus... Or actually, it's... I should have done it. Uh, let's do it. Yeah. Technically, it's minus 5x plus 5x. Right. But I just don't want to confuse you. It is minus 5x, and it's plus 5x, and then it's what? Minus 25. Now, if we simplify that, that's 0, so it's just x squared minus 25. Agree? Now, let's take a look. The question is, we're going to give you something like this. It doesn't have a middle term. Like all these other problems had middle terms, didn't they? This doesn't have a middle term. But um, we'll see a relationship between that and that. Let's just do another one. Um, Let's go like 3x squared plus 2y, okay? And then I'm going to go 3x squared minus 2y. Now notice, notice the little pattern here. You see this? This is x plus 5. This is what? x minus 5. Everything stayed the same except one's plus, one's minus. Everybody see that? So that's what you want to see. You want to kind of see this pattern going on here. It's going to help you when we actually do factor these. Uh, let's go ahead and multiply this together. So it's 3x squared times 3x squared, which is what? 9x to the fourth. Good. All right, now what's this going to be? It's going to be minus 6x squared y, right? The outside. And then the inside is going to be what? Plus 6x squared y, which, is, which means what's going to happen? It's going to equal 0, right? It's going to add up to 0, which means it's just going to go away, right? Because it's being added to this stuff. So I don't even have to put that, sec that step in there. I did it up here, but I don't have to do it now, do I? And now, what's my last? 2y, it's minus, right? Because it's positive times a negative, and then it's 2 times 2, which is 4, and then it's y squared. You with me? So what we're going to do, I mean, you already know how to multiply that stuff together. That's not new. What we're going to do is we're going to take this and write it out like this. Okay, we're going to give you the answer, and you got to come up with the question if you want to think of it that way. We're going to factor this. What times what is going to equal this thing right here? This is, right? This parentheses times this parentheses. They multiply together to become this. It's just a matter of seeing a pattern. We give this a name, and the name in itself is a nice hint, all right, when you do these problems. It's called the difference of two squares. Remember doing that in algebra 2? It's called the difference of two squares. Why do they call it the difference of two squares? Well, because there's a minus. What word goes with minus? Well, <laughs> I just wrote it down. Come on. What word that I just wrote down goes with minus? Difference, right? The difference goes with minus. Would you agree? All right, that's what it means. The difference is you subtract two things and you need your answer. It's the difference. So it's the difference of two squares. Now look, I'm squaring something to get this, aren't I? What am I squaring to get this? What am I squaring to get 9? A 3. What am I squaring to get x to the 4th? x squared. What am I squaring to get 4? 2. What am I squaring to get y squared? A y. Do you see it? So this is a difference of two squares. Same thing here. Look, this is this a difference of two squares? Yeah, because look, it's a difference, right? A minus. Is something being squared to give you x squared? Absolutely. Is something being squared to give you 25? Yes? No? Yeah. Okay, 5 is, right? And there you go. So now that you know the pattern, look, a difference of two squares means what? You're going to have two parentheses. Notice both of these. One's going to be what? Plus. One's going to be minus. So what goes here? This times this has to equal x squared. So what, do you, what are we going to put there? x. This times this, it's going to be the same number. Remember, it's a difference of two squares equals 25. So 5 and a 5. And that's how you factor it. You had a question? Um, will we have to solve it like that first to get that answer? No, no, no. I said we're going to start with this. 
and we're going to come up with this. It's going to say factor. It's going to give you something like this. So pretend that stuff's not even there. Okay. So they're going to say this. They're going to say factor. All right. So you look at it and you're like, hmm, what kind of factoring is this? There's no greatest common factor, is there? All right. Um, it doesn't have a term in the middle like we've been doing before. Uh, it's not by grouping or anything like that. So you look at it and you're like, hmm, wait a minute. I got two things, right? See? Two things. And it's a difference, right? Minus in between of two squares. Is something being squared to give you this? Yeah. Is something being squared to give you that? Yes. So this is a difference of two squares, isn't it? So what? after we establish this little pattern that we did right here, how do we set this up? Two parentheses. I always put the signs first, right? One's plus and one's minus. Now, what is being squared to give you x squared? x. What's being squared to give you 25? And what's going to be over here? Same exact thing, except one's a plus, one's a minus. And then that is your answer right there. That's what you circle for your answer. Make sense? All right, again, it is pretty simple. Let's, let's make up another one. Let's say um, 16a uh, squared minus 49b to the sixth. What if I ask you to factor this? First of all, let's see if it's a difference of two squares first. Is it a difference? Yes. All right. Remember, this only works if it's a difference, if it's a minus. If that was a plus, you couldn't do it. It's not the sum of two squares, is it? It's what? The difference of two squares. So is there something being squared to give you 16? Yeah, 4. What about a? Or a squared? a, yeah. What about 49? Is something being squared? 7. Is something being squared to give you b to the 6? Is something being squared to give you b to the 6? b to the 3rd, that's right. b cubed. You see that? So b cubed squared is b to the 6. So that's what you have to think of right there. So what do you do? You put a couple parentheses. I told you this was pretty easy, didn't I? All right. So you recognize it's a difference of two squares. So the first one's going to be plus, and the second one's going to be minus. And now, what goes here? 4a. Good. And then the same thing goes right here, doesn't it? All right. Because 4a times 4a is 16a squared. Would you agree? All right. What about this? It's going to be a 7, and then it's going to be what? b to the third. That's right. And this is going to be the exact same thing, 7b cubed. That's it. You're done. It's now factored. So those two things multiply together to become this thing right here. So you start off with this. They're going to tell you to factor. They may even say, I'm not really sure. Let me look. Yeah, they actually do. They make that nice. They say um, factor the difference of two squares. So they even give you a hint that this is a difference of two squares. Right? Not all the time will they do that. Uh, sometimes they'll just say factor, and they won't tell you which way to factor. And you got to figure it out on your own which way you should be factoring these things. Make sense? But um, it looks like on this worksheet that they tell you to factor it by um, with the difference of two squares. That's all there is to it. I think that's pretty easy, don't you? All right. Let's do another type. I think that's one of the easiest types that you're going to do. It really is. I'm not just saying that. It really is one of the easiest types that we're going to do. The next type right here is not too bad, but um, let's take a look at it. All right, let's do another type of factoring. Watch what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to go, i tell you what, before I even do the y, let's do this. Let's go to like x plus 3. All right, so it's, this is plus. And then I'm going to put a squared here. Do you remember how we do this? We don't just say x squared plus 3 squared, do we? Right, you got to FOIL it. But before we FOIL it, we got to set it up, don't we? x plus 3 times what? x plus 3. Again, I want to see. I want to visualize a little pattern going on here, right? Um, let's go. Let's do FOIL. So it's going to be x squared. Now, did the outside and inside add to 0 this time? No. no. This is different. This is not a difference of two squares, is it? So it's going to be x squared plus what? Plus 3x plus 3x, which is plus 6x. So really, every time you have this, whenever you have something that is squared on the outside, the outside and the inside will always be the same thing. Would you agree? All right? As long as this thing's being squared, the outside and the inside will always be the same thing. So which means what? You take one of them, like the outside, you could think of it as adding it to the inside, but you could also think of it as doing what? Instead of, if I take a number and I add it to itself, what's another way of thinking of that? Taking a number and doing what to it? So if I said 5 plus 5 is 10, 
Uh, if I said 25 plus 25 is 10, what's another way to think of something adding to itself? Say it, you just said. Mm -hmm. Multiplying by 2, right? Isn't that the same thing? So think of this. I could think of just this, 3x. Instead of thinking of adding it to another 3x, I could just say 3x times what? You just said it all. Let me say it again. Times times 2. Instead of saying 3x plus 3x is 6x, you could think of it as what? 3x times 2, would you? Same thing, isn't it? All right. I'm going somewhere with that. All right. So uh, we'll get there in a second. Plus what? 9. There you go. So that is the answer to this thing right here. Now, we haven't, for we haven't um, factored yet, have we? But what do you think we're eventually going to do? I'm eventually going to give you this, all right? And then we're going to come up with that. Make sense? Or, or this right here, either way, it's the same thing. So that's what we're going to do. Let's do another one. Let's go like x minus 5, and then go square equals. Now, now after a while, you're not going to have to put these two parentheses, because you're going to, we're going to establish this little pattern, and you're going to see a little bit in an easier way to multiply these together. But for right now, we're just going to write it out. So it's x minus 5 times x minus 5. Let's go ahead and FOIL. So x squared, right, minus 5x minus 5x. Or you could think of it as what? Minus 5x times 2, which is minus 10x. Isn't that the same thing? Minus 5x minus 5x? Yeah. Um, and then what? Plus 25. You get it? So that's your answer. But again, what are we going to do? I'm going to give you something like this, and I'm going to expect you to be able to factor it, and you're going to come up with that as an answer. But we got to see the pattern. Well, let's see the pattern here. Look at this thing right here. If I took the square root of it, what do I get? I get a 3. You see that? And if I take that 3 and then multiply it by 2, I get what? 6. Does that same thing work here? Look at it. If I take the square root of this, I get what? 5. If I double 5, I get 10. That works, doesn't it? That probably works every single time. You could think of it another way. You could think of it like this. This might be a better way to think of it for something we're going to do a little bit later. Not today, maybe not even tomorrow, okay? But a little bit later, we're going to do this. Um, what if I took half of this? What do I get? I get 3. That kind of gives me that number right there. And then if I take that 3 and square it, what do I get? I get a 9. This is one way to check to see if it's this type of factoring. If I take half of this, right, and square it, I should get this number right here, right? And it should work every time if it's one of these types of factoring. Let's do the same thing here. Take half of this. What do you get? Five, right? And, and I don't even care about the negative right now. Okay, you get five, don't you? And then square five, what do you get? You get 25. Do you see it? Okay, so you see a little pattern going here. What about this? What about x plus y? This is kind of a more of a general thing without just regular numbers, and you square it. So what would that be? It would be x plus y times x plus y. Let's work this thing out. x times x is x squared. There's an xy, there's an xy. So what, is he, what do you get? xy plus xy, or xy times what? 2. So that's a 2xy plus what? y squared. You follow me on this? And, um, yep, there you go. So, yeah, that's all. I was going to get a little detailed on this, but that's, that's fine. So that's kind of like your regular, um, I don't know, it's without regular numbers. This is kind of like your general formula for this. By the way, we call this, when we have a parentheses and we have a squared on the end, we call this a perfect square. Okay, So it's not a difference of two squares, is it? This is a perfect square. And I'm going to refer to that quite a bit. And I'm going to say, oh, this thing's a perfect square. It's a perfect square. It's a perfect square. you got to know what I'm talking about when I say it's a perfect square. What does it mean to be a perfect square? It means something in parentheses is being squared. You could have a minus. You could have a plus, whatever. Okay, that's a perfect square. You follow me? So what we're going to do, we have to, we have to look at this and say, hmm, all right, this is a perfect square. What's it going to look like? It's going to look like this thing right here. Let's do a couple more examples with perfect squares. We'll do it on the next video since we're running out of time.